Well, howdy, everybody. Today's video is about a little do-it-yourself project from about a year and a half ago. When we bought this house, the master shower had an exposed aggregate floor, which was uncomfortable, to say the least. If you've ever walked on a regular exposed aggregate slab with bare feet, you know what I'm talking about. But magnify that by about 10, 12, or 1,000, because this was exposed river run, not aggregate. So that's incredibly uncomfortable. We lived with it for about two years when I decided that's enough. And I had seen a picture of a, a teak spa. So I decided, how about we build ourselves a nice slatted floor to go over the top of the one that's there. So this project is about how I did that, the end result, and how we even clean it now because we have to take it up to clean the drain periodically. So this little video covers the details. So here we go. We'll show you what it looked like before we started when we're done and the steps along the way. So enjoy. We start with three lists. The materials used, the tools I used, and the process or timeline associated with this project. You may want to refer back to these, mark this point, or print them out. You could also screenshot these for future reference. Our first diagram is a bottom view of the support assembly for the flooring. We have blue outlines that show the horizontal supports, and the green outlines are the strips that raise these supports just 3 eighths of an inch above the original floor and allow water to flow underneath the horizontal supports. The spacing is determined by the size of your shower. That's why this is not to scale in terms of where the, the support strips are placed. I recommend 12 to 14 inches between them, which is what we used in ours. You don't need it close to the front edge or the back edge because most people aren't standing there and you can't have that too close to your drain. The red circle is the drain here. This shows the slats in place, the flooring, on top of the support strips and where we place the nylon pull handles that go around those support strips and they go through the slots in between the flooring slats. Uh, 3 16 nylon rope is about right and a, yeah, about 18 inches long is enough for a loop. You put one in each of those spaces and leave the knots on the bottom then you can tuck them down into the slats when you're done. It's easy enough to pick them through and then use that to lift up the floor in order to clean the, uh, the actual shower floor underneath this. That will become necessary because your, your drain will become clogged eventually. So here's how the uh, assembly goes down. This shows the horizontal supports and each one of the flooring strips going down. These are two inch wide strips of teak. Ours are one and a sixteenth of an inch thick. The minimum recommended height is seven eighths inch. We use one and a quarter inch teak stock and then plane it down. This shows the bottom view of our support grid again and where we put the spacers in order to raise the, the horizontal supports up enough to create water flow. Remember, your mileage may vary. Depending on where your drain is and the size of your shower, the way you space the horizontal supports and where you have to put the resultant spacers to create water flow will change. This shows these actual supports. We list them as 7 8 because that's the minimum. Mine are 1 and a 16th. And then you can see the green spacer slats laid in place over those. Again, you're looking from the bottom here. This is looking from the bottom up. This diagram illustrates the spacing between the flooring strips. You need a quarter of an inch between each one, but three-eighths where you're going to put your nylon rope poles. They have to tuck back down in those slats. This shows a side view with your horizontal supports and your spacers underneath, 
and your flooring with the specs. Again, 7 eighths is the recommended minimum. I used an inch and a sixteenth for my flooring. End view of the same thing here. Shows your spacing. Screws are one and five eighths by eight stainless steel grip right screws. The spacers can be air stapled in place or you can use one inch stainless steel screws for those. You're gonna need about 18 inches of nylon cord for each of the rope poles. So here's where we started with this horrible, heavy rock floor. So painful to stand on. And where we wound up when we were done was this gorgeous teak floor. And in between, there was a lot of work. So this is how we did it. Our project commences with a trip to HLC Hardwoods in Dallas, Texas, where I can pick up a nice big batch of large chunks of teak, plus some poplar and oak for other projects. Load it all into the Tahoe and drag it back to the shop where we can make small pieces out of big pieces. After the teak boards come out of the planer, they're one and a sixteenth of an inch thick. They're then ripped to width at two inches each. And these are our flooring slats. Looking at our floor, we want to allow for drainage. The water's got to get to the drain. Your mileage may vary. Your drain may be in the middle, may be at the other end, but the water's got to get through to the drain. So if we just lay the supports on the floor, as you can see, the water stops at the supports. And that doesn't get what we want. So we have to raise those horizontal supports up off the floor by about three-eighths of an inch. To do that, we take some of this two-inch teak and we resaw it to half-inch. Then we run it through the planer to three-eighths of an inch. And then it becomes the bottom layer of our support grid, tying our horizontal supports together. This makes a nice rigid assembly and it lets the water flow underneath the horizontal supports. Your mileage may vary, again. Then we take all of our two-inch teak and we start drilling holes in it. We use a countersink to put the heads below the surface. We do two screws per section, same distance from the edge, about three quarters of an inch. Once that's done, we need to flip it over and drill out the holes on the bottom so they're nice and smooth and even. Then we're ready to start finishing the teak. This shows some of the holes countersunk. We'll look at another view of this with some of the holes countersunk. Once you have them all drilled out and the bottom holes cleaned out, time to start finishing these. First, we erase all the pencil lines and use this type of eraser. It leaves no residue. It's not a rubber. It's more of a plastic. Once you're done with that, Sanding starts. You want to find sandpaper. Make sure you don't have any splinters. The last thing you want in your shower is probably splinters in your feet. And that's the reason we use the type of screws we do also. When you're done, blow off all the sawdust with an air compressor, then wipe it down with a tack-free cloth. You don't want any fuzzies in your finish. And we're going to finish it with Watco Teak Oil. This is your best finish for teak. It's going to need four coats. So you start by filling the screw holes with teak oil. You want to make sure they're sealed tight so you don't have any water leaking into the wood from the screw holes. Get a nice heavy finish on those. Then you coat all six sides of each strip, the supports and the flooring, with teak oil. You use a rag. Don't use a brush. A rag's a better tool. Get a nice even finish and then let it dry for 24 hours. Rinse and repeat. So every 24 hours, you can get another coat on. You're going to need a long time before you're all finished, but it's worth it. Four good solid coats gets a lifelong finish on this. Once those are all done, we can start to assemble it. What you're going to see next is your support grid, and it has already been finished and assembled. You see the strips on the bottom, the 3 8 inch strips allow the water to flow through underneath the horizontal supports. 
You'll note the square here that we use to make sure it's nice and square before we fasten it together. And then you start screwing the flooring into place. Start with the two outer edges for strength. So again, you want to make sure it's square and straight. And then you start putting the rest in place. We use these particular screws, these grip right number eight inch and five eight stainless steel screws with a Torx head. This is really important because you don't want burrs any more than you want splinters in your feet, right? This is what it looks like upside down and complete. You'll notice the strips that let the water through create space underneath the horizontal supports. This is the bottom of it from another view. Again, you can see our, our strips that allow the water flow. This is the crucial element of this. Now it's finished, ready to install. It's complete. Let's go look at how we take this thing up and clean it. All right, so we've had this floor in for about two years now, or not quite. Periodically, we need to do some cleaning of the drain, which is typical with any shower. So I allowed for that when I designed it. And unfortunately, the house has shifted a little bit. The foundation does that here in Texas, so it's not perfectly square anymore. So first thing I have to do is take a pry bar and just gently move this away from the wall, give me a little maneuvering room. And I need something to clean the floor with when I'm done. So we set this down and one of these handy little dental picks enables me to lift this nylon cord up out of this slot that I allowed for a handle to lift the floor with. And then we just do this. <clears throat> Prop it up like that so it sits up on the edge. Your mileage may vary. And then we lift it like this up out of the way. And you will note we have an abundance of hair clogging the drain. This happens periodically, no big deal. Scrape it out, throw it away, and then we need some water. I put this shower head in place a few weeks ago from our friends at Costco, about 41 bucks, and it sure makes my life a lot easier cleaning this shower out. Got a nice variable stream. Want to get it wet before we start cleaning it. Also enables me to spray down the underside of the, the floor. And you can see how we've raised this up on these slats so the water will flow down to the drain. So we get that rinsed down a little bit. Slide the doors open. Take some of this wonderful stuff called Fabuloso. It smells good too. Makes the whole bathroom smell better again because it gets a little funky. Oh, we just scrub it. And now we got this, we can just sort of rinse things down. And put it all back again. Now we got ourselves a clean drain. It'll drain the way it's supposed to. Simple enough to set this back in place. You do want to watch your fingers. This sucker's a little on the heavy side. And then we'll run some more. And then get your fingers out of the way and drop it. And then just drop this nylon cord back in place. And it's as good as new, except for a little rinsing around the edges to get the soap that hides behind it out of the way. And then generally I squeegee this thing every day, just lightly. It doesn't need to be cleaned, and it's a really robust finish. You can see how the water beads up on it. It's uh, really low maintenance. So there you have it, boys and girls. The Teak Shower Floor Conversion Project. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it educational. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting projects along the way. Have a great day.